Between the end of that strange winter and the approach of New Year, my life went on without change. The day would dawn and I would repeat my alternation of spending time with my friends and honing my powers in the mine dungeon. It rained a lot last month. December's uncharacteristically warm, sweaty days only added to the anxiety I was feeling about New Year's Eve. Aside from the weather, there was hardly anything to distinguish one day from the next. Each day we trained, we hung out, we read the newspapers, we read about deaths, shootings, kidnappings, bombings. I worked at concentrating my attention on the real and useful. Even with all my friends with me, every now and then I would feel a violent stab of loneliness. The very water I drank, the very air I breathed, would feel like long, sharp needles. I could hear the roots of loneliness creeping through me when the world was hushed at four o'clock in the morning. Christmas was coming, and then, in a few days, the world might end. Could I really be the end? I was starting to love the world so much. All of my friends, my mom, even my sister. Everyone seemed so much more special when I realized how easily they could be lost.
in the middle! I said no anchovies!
Pues.
your face is screwed up in this other stuff. Okay. sleigh bells far away, like the background of a Christmas song. 
Chimes, maybe? A church? I sat up in the bed and felt for my panda. He was still asleep. He slept more soundly than I did these days. I sat still and listened hard, but the only sound I could hear was the faint, dry thumping of my own heart. Months ago, I hated when my heart raced. It either meant I was nervous, or I had been forced to exercise against my will. That's changed. With all the time I've spent training in the mind dungeon, everything feels clear. My mind, my muscles, everything was coming into focus. I lived for the moments when I could feel my heart beat. I became excited for every pump forcing blood through my body. I felt alive. I was going to hold on to this feeling as long as I could. Where did that music come from? Maybe I'd been dreaming after all. I thought back to earlier in the summer. I used to dream all the time, but lately my dreams were fevered and confused. I missed when I dreamed of the Essentia 2000. I wondered where she was. Where did she go at night? Why didn't she ever stay with me? Where do transdimensional androids go at night? Panda. Panda. Wake up. Panda. What time is it? 4 a.m. What's wrong? Is the house on fire? No. Where do you think the Essentia 2000 goes at night? Probably to stay over a hotter guy's house. <sighs> you think so? Think she has an android boyfriend out there somewhere? Yes, probably. Go back to sleep and dream of metal sheep.
Gifts or what? 
Where's the Essential 2000? I guess she ain't much of a holiday person. Well, I call all her gifts. <laughs> Would any of you like to hear a Christmas story? Sure, why not? For Christmas 1996, my mother got my dad a computer. It's a really good one, too. He used to do all of his writing on a word processor. The ones with the really tiny screens where you could see seven or eight lines max. So anyway, my dad unboxes it and freaks out. He was so excited. And you know, I fell in love with it right away. Whenever my dad left the house, I'd get on the computer and play games, browse the internet. In 98, for Christmas, they got me my own computer. No one else has their own computer. It was amazing. We made a friend online. Together, we founded Honest of 1999. Now you wanna hear the really funny part? When I went and lived all of my parallel lives, I was him. I was on a computer talking to me. Now tell me, how the hell can a computer connect to a chat room that is in another reality? Something is screwed up here, guys. Michael, now might not be the time to talk about this. Dude, this might be our last Christmas together. Or ever. And you want to waste the talking about this? You guys have to tell me you've noticed it too. Do you honestly feel like things are the same as they were two months ago? Two years ago? Dude, things change. That's like... You're all intentionally not seeing it! The very fabric of everything has changed! It's like one day we were cotton, and today we're made out of metal! Things are so different! Can you give us an example, Michael? Okay! Why the hell haven't any of you asked why the entities were driving the android around? So what? We save her and we just forget about it? Why was she in the van in the first place? Fella, you said it yourself. Soul survivors do not kidnap people. They didn't kidnap Sammy, and they didn't take the Essentia hostage. Something is weird here. It's like strange things are happening all around us, and only I'm actually noticing it! They... Look, we just need to find the Ascension 2000 and ask her how her body ended up in the van. It's that simple. Let's finish opening up gifts. Tomorrow, we can sort this out. That's what we did. We exchanged gifts. But I was with Michael on this one. Something was wrong and I couldn't place my finger on it. I wondered if this was how people with dying family members felt. A sense of dread. But... It wasn't a sense of dread I was feeling. It was a loss of self. A complete dissolve of everything I had ever known. The only thing that was a step beyond death. When people die, reality, the color of the sky, the sound of the trees, your memories, all remain the same. This was different. This was beyond unusual. <laughs>